Henda, you are now entering a space for black history. Welcome to black excellence. Do not fear, for if you do, just sip on some grandeur. We got a hundred and seven views! <laughs> We got a special announcement to make today, 7th of November, mm-hmm. 2020. Give it up for the one and only Saul Peluka. <laughs> So the next milestone, Sol, are you ready for this? We're trying to fill up uh, Sunbet Arena in Pretoria for our one million subscribers what? event. One million? One million. Hey, hey man, I'm scared about this one, Sol. I was telling you, it's so weird because I used to go to a house uh, uh, all the time to... Um, hey, why are you giving me that look? <laughs> finish. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. How's, the, how's the single life now? How, how are we doing? Is it nice? <laughs> hey, I was like that nice. How Perita got a groove back? Hey. When he started getting the spotlight, I think which... <laughs> some of the spotlight was you guys. He's responsible, yeah. You know? Um, which, which I understand... <laughs> I'm looking forward to a time in South Africa where we can get South African managers, black managers, Abantu to that know how to manage and Ah, we far from that. They just want to drink the rider, man. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I think, if anything, um, I want to thank me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we're cutting down to the road to 1 million. 30th of July, Salt Penduka. It's on, bro. Are you joining us at Sun okay, Arena, Berita? Has the day changed? Yeah. Oh, because I saw I saw the <laughs> I saw that you guys are suffering. Yeah, I was suffering, eh? But I like that you guys were honest about it. Cause I also was told last week, like I have a show in East London. I was told, e. Is that Ticket. People are like, Pierita, we love you. I'm yeah. like, love me by buying tickets, please. There's something <laughs> weird going on, bro. Events aren't selling as much, bro. Something are weird they is being going as on. well organized prior? For example, your event or the one they booked you for, was it, you know? No, you've got a point. Stands. I think for me as an artist, I think we're also transitioning. We're in a period where artists are almost becoming promoters. Mm-hmm. especially certain types of artists, you know. So it's a very tricky one because we're not really used to, like, promoting our own shows. Oh, it's self-staged. The I one think, in East yes, London. the one in East London is self-staged. Oh. But I'm I'm getting over it. I mean, with, with Gabecha two weeks back, it was sold out. People had to, like, be turned away from the show. Oh, so, no. Which is, like, now I know next time, bigger venue, go harder. So, yeah. What's the biggest uh, event you've ever performed at? Oh my goodness, what is the biggest event I've ever performed at? I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, it's it has to be the festivals, the Buyelekaya, mm, the Devon the Jazz Festival. Um, yeah, it has to be, you know, the big jazz festivals around You've the You've never country. done the Mandela ones, the, the 46661? No, I'm not that old. <laughs> 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 no, man, didn't they have the myth even after they passed away? I'm sure they've had some Mandela. No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> it's not that old. <laughs> anyway, head now, Varimini, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our friend of the show. Her name is Gugule Kumalo, aka Barita. I don't know, have we adopted you? Do we announce you as one of the greatest vocalists to come out of SA or is it Zim? Like, have we adopted you or not? So it is a Zim SA situation yeah. because I started my career in East London. My mm. music journey started there. If you hear someone that I grew up with from Bulawayo saying yeah. I was singing, ah. Uh, <laughs> they're lying, they're, they're camping. Um, I sang a little bit in the choir, mm. but my journey has has been a bit of both. South Africa has contributed immensely yeah. to, to my journey. Um, my ancestry, I mean, Makumalo, Mamtungwa, Ziligazi, Mashobane. So my ancestry is, you know, 
South Africa. Do they give you love when you go back to Zim? To Zim. Zim is home. They do give me love. They used to give me flack about singing in Kosa and everything. Um, but I have songs in Debele as well, which is my home language. And Debele and Kosa and Zulu, Nesiswati, it's own Guni languages. So sometimes they are Teta, sometimes in Kuluma. Confuses people a bit, but... You know, I was telling you, it's so weird because I used to go to a house uh, uh, all the time to... Um, hey, why are you giving me that look? Don't <laughs> <laughs> finish. <laughs> Go to, uh, to go meet up with your ex-husband, right? Yeah. Oh. And I realized that we actually never spoke because we're also like, hi, hi. And then I'd speak to notes and then that was that. But like, yeah. we've actually never spoke, you and I. Yeah. Yeah, you would come over, but you that was like business meetings, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would possibly be doing other things as well. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it crazy that here you are, right? Yeah. You've worked so hard in your career to yeah. be where you are. Yeah. But now, because of your ex-husband, everybody <laughs> just wants to talk about him. <laughs> everybody sees you as Nota's ex-wife. Isn't that weird? When you've been around. You know what I mean? I mean been you know what it you is? know what I mean? I, you know what it is? The beautiful thing about it is at the heart and at the core, I'm a musician. Mm. And those people that know, like when you hear Tandoluit, when you hear the music, you don't think of other things. And I think up until this point, I'm someone who really does not like the public eye. I I am generally quite shy. Like yeah. it's even evident. Even if you look at my pictures, even when I have to like do a video, I am generally a shy person. So I think I have never really liked to be out there in the spotlight. And I didn't notice when I think, <laughs> so I didn't did notice that. that I had married someone who who loved the spotlight. Yeah. It only came out yeah. later. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things are weird. Yeah. How's the how's the single life now? How, how are we doing? Nice. Is it nice? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Yamuza, hey, hey, that nice. How Perita got a groove back? Hey, 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 Yamuza, that nice. Good, yeah. I'm alone. What's the life? How could lonely? No, the, you know what the thing is, ne? <laughs> and it's not. It has nothing to do with anyone. Shame. It has nothing to do with my ex-husband. Yeah. My ex-husband, I I loved him. Yeah. I never want it to be, look like you know things change. People change. Of course. But there People was a grow. time. Mm. You, I'm sure when you came to my to our home, I was got is a ring there. Oh, fucked up, <laughs> fucked up. You were giving me a uh, Yebo Mama vibes. <laughs> Have you had her food? No, no, no. Oh, no, ah, did, did we, we, no, 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 no but like... For the visit touch. <laughs> no, but you know, I was legit married, guys. Oh, and you yeah. must understand that people that get married ne, are people that love to be married. Like, there's a thing about where you just like, you're a one person kind of person, yeah. you know? So, um, but now I think I also realize that even my my d- decisions, you know, like I realized that I hadn't come fully into myself when I committed to be with somebody for the rest of my life. Mm. And now I'm realizing that, oh, actually, um, you know, I could have made a different decision. I could have made a better decision or maybe the timing of it, you know, like you come back and you realize that I can't be alone and it's so much more peaceful. When was the last alone. time you were alone? When was the last time I was alone? Mm. How? In terms of uh, before you got married now, how long you... So I actually... Mm. I actually didn't date for like a year and three months before I met my ex-husband. Yes, yes. And like when I met him, he reminded me of my dad. Oh, like, okay. He reminded me, we sat down, he just had this aura that reminded me of my father. And it's true when they say you marry like a man that reminds you of your dad. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying you're only single for a year. Yeah. And then you met him what 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 year did you meet him? Um 20 So I met I had we had like been you know in music you bump into people. So we had bumped into each other a couple of times. Um and I think we had even worked on like a collaboration for an artist he was working with at the time. But we met, met, I think, late 2018. That's when we started communicating a bit more. But even then, I think, honestly, when we first met, we were like, you know, he he was consulting for me. Okay, okay, okay. On beginning a release. But, you know, the consulting quickly went... To couch casting. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I. And why did I come here? 
No, no kidding, to be yeah. honest, yeah, to yeah. be honest, like to be honest, I legit fell for him. Like yeah. as a person, like yeah. there was a heart in him that I saw. Yeah. There were things I saw, and you must understand. I think a lot of people you knew him a long time back. Yeah, you will also say like. Yeah. You know, there's a different person, I think, that has emerged the past two years. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and that person, I honestly didn't know. I knew someone who, when we first met, we were both like working on ourselves. Yeah. But we were both like, we were passionate about the same things. Mm. I think that's what drew music, me to 100%, him. Yeah. Passionate about music. You know, there were just other things that we were just, we saw a lot you know, on a similar perspective. So the reason why I was asking you what yeah. year was that, because being single in 2018 yeah. and being single now in 2023 is two different worlds, oh, no. bro. It's, yeah. it's crazy it's, right now, bro, you know? Yeah. It's tough being single out there. The streets are cold, dog. What, you know what, why, why is it yeah. tougher now than it was in 2018? Because everybody's just fucking around, dog. Nobody wants to be with one person anymore. Am I lying? Yeah, that's why I'm enjoying the single life. Mm. Ah. Not being with one person. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. It's empowering. No, the only thing I had, let me tell you what I had to get over, right? Yeah. When I first became single, oh my goodness, I would have get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> when you become single, there are people that want you that are already in relationships. That's what I'm That's saying. That's the problem. Right. That's what I'm saying. That is the problem. Like, mm. Mm. and that was the thing where I had to just draw a line for myself and be like, I don't want to be with someone, someone. I don't want to be with someone who's been with somebody else or who is like married. Or And that thing, you have to just block people because people are constantly coming at you because they can see that, oh. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, how are your DMs? Are people sliding in your DMs? <laughs> My DMs are quiet. I like it. please. Tinder, do you do the Tinder thing? No. Oh, so where no, are you meeting I'm these very guys then? Traditional. I'm not trying to meet people. Yeah. I like I'm working. I'm in the studio. I am rehearsing. I am putting on shows. I've got music coming out. I, I, I like I'm I'm not trying to do that right now. <laughs> mm. The song that you got out now, what's that song yeah. about? What's it called? So the song is called Peace of Mind. Peace of Mind. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. What's it about? So the song is really about me first. I think the first thing that I went through, you must understand that like when I left uh, my marriage, mm. I left because my ex-husband was showing a certain level of rage and anger that mm. I've never experienced before. Mm. I only later, I remember the last incident of rage that happened. That's when I called a therapist and the therapist was like, this is dangerous. Huh. Someone's going to die in this house. Huh. So for me, it's like you go from being, you're in, when you, and it was like our first year of marriage where I started to see things and the first thing you think is big as Ella, like Yeah, like, Of course, like, that's what you guys are taught. You know, that's what we're taught as women. Doing. Every you week we're always saying, hey, I'm Peter Strong. Hey, hey, Peter Strong. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Peter Strong. <laughs> you know? and you're like, the strongest I'm, woman in that <laughs> sense at some point. <laughs> We'll give you a medal. We should have brought and the, it. And the thing is, I really was trying because at some point I just, at some point I kind of took a break from working and I was like, okay, let me see what's happening in my household. And also the thing is, it's also lockdown. Mm. You know? Didn't so you get married during lockdown? I got married during lockdown. Mm. So, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, man. <laughs> and that's how the happened. song Peace of Mind. So, so Peace of Mind is really about me getting to a point of, getting my peace back and hoping that my ex-husband also finds peace. Oh, yeah. Because I do not think that he's at peace. No. Whatever is going on and, and everything. You know, it's nice to speculate from the outside. Sometimes I look at speculations, mm. but the truth of the matter is when I left, he wasn't at peace. Mm. And, uh, you know, when you love someone and you've loved them before, you always have love for them. Mm. And for me, I desire peace you know, for him. And also just, I think I also got to realize in the last year that I don't think that that was the right person for me. Hmm. My, my, the kind of person I am. And I don't think maybe I was the right person for him as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe, you know, like, I don't think I was, I think sometimes you get together in a relationship and it's nice. Mm -hmm. Then you you don't realize that, oh, actually, there's a certain level of brokenness that maybe we both haven't addressed sure. within 
you know, mm. and it shows up and it shows up in different Creeps ways. Creeps up, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, my thing is, when I heard that you guys are getting a divorce, I started getting worried for him. Because I know, like, you were always there for him and he'd really, like, listen to you. So when I heard that you were leaving him, I'm like, oh, my that, goodness, this I was think bad. That's, he was this corner, that yeah. corner. Because yeah. yeah. a lot of people problem. left him, a lot of people and in the industry. And, and I think that's the problem. I think when you're with someone and people say to you, ah, he only listens to you, that that I didn't know. Now I didn't know red flags before mm. because I didn't date a lot of people before, right? So I now know that like when you're in someone's life and people are so happy that you're in that person's life, that means that there's something going on that you're not privy to. You think so? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So for me, it's like I remember last year realizing at some point I was like, why am I the only person that is now in this person's life? And I had I asked myself, is there something wrong with me? What am I what am I doing wrong? You know, um, am I not a supportive partner? Then I realized, I mean, we went to, you know, there was a time we went to therapy and then I, there were other things that popped up. And obviously therapy is like a private thing. You, yeah, 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 yeah. you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then I I was I was willing to support my my then husband through the process of okay I remember at some point there was like okay you've got anger management issues oh. I will support you through that but now it gets tricky when I speak to you and I say hey your how you're dealing with issues is now affecting my career and my brand and I've worked so hard yeah. to build this yeah, yeah, yeah. and I and and I remember the response from him being like. If you haven't worked hard enough to to be able to say whatever you want, whenever you want, that's not my problem. Oh. That's when things, it's like, okay, I'm supporting you so much. Yeah. Um, but when I, I won't like, mm, mm. you, for you, it's like, you know, then it becomes, that's where the term, I think, narcissism comes from. Yes. That's when when you don't care about somebody else, you somebody else just has to rock with your music. Who's staring? You know, you you know somebody else has to be okay with you today being so angry and shouting and screaming. The next day, you're like the nicest human being. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. That's I think that's where the challenge is. Isn't that bipolar? That sounds like bipolar. I I can't diagnose. I actually, mm. you know, come from a family where I have a family member that is bipolar. You okay. actually get diagnosed for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you can't necessarily, when you see someone having anger out, outbursts and things like that, you can't diagnose that. You can't say it's bipolar. Even narcissism, you can't say because okay, we're true. living in a narcissistic society. But mm. now I will say that when I found out that sometimes someone who is <clears throat> going through a period where they are constantly angry, they are constantly shouting and things like that. They don't know that they are being abusive to the people that they love. Mm -hmm. When you go out there and you disclose information about your loved ones or your, your wife or things like that, that they have not allowed you to disclose, yes. you're breaching that trust. Mm. That is abusiveness. Mm. You, you can look at it and say, ah, but now I'm being called an abuser because that is abusive mm. behavior. Did it ever get physical though? No. Okay. No, I, I, it, it didn't. And... I, I I honestly to this day don't believe that he's done ev that stuff he's done to me because he wanted to. Huh. I I think it's someone that I think it's someone that just really needs to work on themselves. Mm -hmm. At some point we had discussed him completely being off social media. Yeah, I was like, you know, yeah. if you get off social media completely, work on yourself because you have so much to contribute, mm -hmm. right, to society and to the industry. Even mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I want, you know. <clears throat> He didn't make me, but there was a time in my career, like any other partner, where he was supportive. Where yeah. I would say, baby, I'm doing this gig and this gig and this gig. You're yeah. like, oh, you're in Durban. Okay, why don't you also go to boom, 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 boom yeah. this yeah. place? Mm. But he didn't, you know, he never managed me. I always, even, even now, I have my own team. I've always been, um, when I went indie, I always took that journey upon myself. But when you've got a partner that you can, you know, um, Lean on. Yes. You know, you, you lean on your partner. You get support from your partner. Of course. But now it shouldn't be that just because there was a time he was support, he was supportive as a partner, now he wants to destroy everything that Eesh. I ever made. Or like mm. you, he made you or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, he, you know, so that... Does he own your music though? No. So mm. there are songs that we wrote together. Ah, There's an album. Okay. When I did songs in the Key of, Key Love, of Love, it was very instrumental in that album. And I'll forever be grateful for that. He, that... We did that album in June and lockdown was going to be in March. He literally, I remember, you know, he's someone who is very in tune. He was able to say, baby, I think that 
this COVID thing is going to close. And I know you want to make an album. And why don't we just try and make your album before it happens? Mm. And he decided, he even helped me like pick the people I worked with. Nice. Drove us to Cape Town. The biggest act of love. We got to Cape Town, worked for a week. There's even like vlogs about it. Yeah. Where he, he was the most... I, like he was the most supporting partner and I was the most appreciative of it. I thanked him. And it's only even when we were doing like the, what you call it, there are songs that he contributed. You mm. know, like when you're in a writing camp, there is like a producer. And yes, yes. And he is a writer. He's written songs. So wow. there are songs where like yours, where, I, you know, sometimes I'll play him demos. Sometimes some of the songs I have, mm. it's like it's a chorus and a verse and I'll play that for him and he will... Like, be like, oh, wow, this is mm. beautiful. He loves music. Mm. I love music. So that's what connected us. Mm. You know, he will come up with stuff. or And and for that, he's credited for. For that, he also is on, on, on the splits of that As work. Sheets, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's what You know, is. like the man that you describe and saying he reminded you of the, your father. He had a great heart and all. To the guy we know now, two different people. Yeah. What do you think was the catalyst or cause of his change in behavior? Hmm. I won't know. I won't know what it was. I think that, um, I think he's worked, ish. I, I'm not making excuses for him mm. because I have not, by the way, spoken to this man in a very long time. I don't know what's going on in his For real? Life. You guys don't talk? No. Like you don't. blocked him everywhere? No, we don't. Has he signed the final split sheet? <laughs> <laughs> that divorce <laughs> decree. That divorce decree. That's the ultimate split sheet. <laughs> that, that split sheet we're still working on. <laughs> and it breaks my heart. It mm. breaks my heart, you know? Yeah, but you were still saying about like his changed behavior. Who do you think so it stems I from? So I think, you know, and and I also I want to be very clear. I I'm not going I'm not making excuses for abusive behavior but there are so many women that have reached out to me that have been in similar positions for real yeah sure. that have there are so many people that have are going through what i'm going mm, through mm. but like in a certain community setting mm. um so my thinking around it is it's basically maybe carrying resentment for a long period of time you know um you know like i watched how breaking up with people that he worked with for a long time broke him I think I watched that. Um, I tried to be supportive to like, let's go to therapy, go to therapy, let's work through this. But I think that um, <clears throat> when he started getting the spotlight, I think which <laughs> some of the spotlight was you guys. He's responsible, yeah. You know, um, which, which I understand. <laughs> No, created all of this. which I understand. <laughs> I understand where it comes from because he's someone that has, is knowledgeable. Yeah, very. Right? Mm. Um, but also we must, you know, like we must also, when someone has knowledge about things, right, it doesn't mean that they are always going to be right. Yeah. So I think that was the case even at the beginning and also breaching people's confidentiality and private. Yeah. You know, the thing that, hey, sh guys, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like there are so many times where you watch someone breaking that confidentiality. The whole reason of in this business, we're in the business of confidentiality. Hundred percent. And I think that he broke a lot of people's trust, you know. Mm. And I think the more he did it, the more he got attention for it. Yeah. The more he really enjoyed that attention. Yeah. I don't oh. know what it feeds in him. Yeah. But it got to a point where by even I, the person that was like the closest to him, because me, at some point we would have conversations and we would have the kindest conversations. Mm. We would go on holiday together mm. and have a really great time. Somewhere in there, there's a man I once loved, mm. you know. But as to what's happening in his life now, that's why I'm always like, for me, I wish him peace and I hope that whatever he's going peace through... Yeah, I'm hoping that he is able to emerge from it. My advice is really is to take time completely off um, and come back and leave his purpose and contribute. And one of the reasons I left for me was to I had to look at myself and like, what's my purpose in life? Is it tied to this person? Mm. It doesn't look like it is mm. because it looks like we're going different directions and it's now starting to affect me emotionally. Mm. It's now starting to affect... Um, 
you know, my work, the work that I'm here to do, I believe each person has purpose work that yeah. they are here mm. to do. And I'm hoping and believing that he will in somehow come into his purpose work. Yeah, man, you, you nailed it. I think I've said this on the show before. It's, it's, it's what they call fame. It's a drug, man. And you can't really dictate or like tell how someone's going to react from fame until it happens. Mm. And also staying in the comments too long. You know, this is a product of such things, you know, but fame is a, is a, is a bad thing, man. And this is what we're seeing, I think. I think it's fame. Yeah, now you're right. Like she said, you know, mm. when you're going to say something shocking because Meg told this me this in confidence or I know this about our business and then you say it, the next podcast wants to have you on. Wh whose mm. beans are you going to spill? You now you're going to keep mean? saying shocking. Now you got to keep being the gift that keeps giving <laughs> and you're fucking up relationships <laughs> in doing so, you know? And yeah, yeah. And I mean, even to like, even, you know, the people that love him the most are the people that for me have suffered the most from it. Mm. So I hope yeah, I want to move on from yeah. this, to be honest. And like <laughs> to all other podcasters, I'm not taking any podcast interviews about this. Yeah. I just felt like if I'm going to talk about this, mm. I went to Kaya because I felt like it was a safe space. And sure, I feel like yeah. you guys also have been a part of this. And also, I just saw how much love he had for the Chillers community. Yes. Like, I didn't oh, know yeah, what yeah. the Chillers were. Yeah, 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 I'm like, yeah, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, talking yeah. To From the G, beginning, I'm, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, if there's two two people that I'm going to go to. It's these two platforms. Outside of that, for me, it's all about the music. Oh, shout yeah. out, man. Shout, shout out. out. We got some <laughs> questions from the chillers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chillers. Here you go. go. Uh, Berita, your background in life and music. How does she master Isikosa and amazingly fuse that in her music as she's originally from the great Zimbabwe? Ooh, wow. So, like I said earlier, it's Tosa, it's Ndebele, it's Suat, it's Zulu, it's all Nguni language. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nguni, yeah. yes. So yes. they are similar. I think what fascinates me about the Tosa language is it's, it's a very expressive language. And like there are some things like in Ndebele, you, if you say Hambokeza, it means like go and sh take a shower. But in Tosa, Sukeza, it mm. means Sunkela, Sunkela Kagubi, yeah. like you know what I mean? So I find this Tosa very expressive. I studied in Walter Sisulu University mm. in East London. And I think that's where my music career started as well. When I was learning words like Nokia Gambo, mm. which means a flower. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Man. Yeah. Then I wrote a song called Nokia Gambo in my first album. I started doing my first performances in the Eastern Cape, singing to Tosa crowds. Mm. So, oh. and as I was learning the language. Is I, this during the Zahara days? This is 2011, 2012, 2013. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a while back. You've been around, eh? I've been, yeah. Damn, Berita. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, what challenge did you face when you moved to SA? Okay. So, <clears throat> hmm. I think for me, to be honest, because I the language I speak assimilates with Isindebel and Distrosa, and I also, <laughs> I did have pretty privilege. Yeah, okay. I I to be honest. Honest. Shout out <laughs> to you for being <laughs> honest. That's my time to work hard. Jay, Umutu has been known very well. Thank you for your honesty. Yo, what a no, refreshing. Pre pretty privileged help me. I think I've struggled maybe in terms of like visas. That's where I've struggled um, because, uh, you know, there isn't an entertainment visa. Oh, and, you yes, know, I've yes. contributed greatly with my music mm. um, to South Africa and I will continue to contribute. But I also understand, you know, like immigration is, is, is a difficult thing. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult department altogether. So, so you don't have an AC... S-A-I-D? Yeah. No, I don't. Oh, what? come on. You've contributed so much. <laughs> I don't. So wait, so what do you have then? So I basically, you know, at the moment, like, I'm I'm a visitor in this country. You're kidding. Yes. Are you on a visiting uh, yeah. A permit? Yeah. And you have to renew Whoa. like every? Yeah, I have to, every 90 days I have to. No. Renew. Not a work <laughs> permit? Why can't no, you get a work permit? Because, so when I tried applying for a work permit, you have to prove that you've got an employer. I'm self-employed. Oh, I'm yeah, an artist. yeah, yeah. And, you know, since 2016, they were saying there's going to be an entertainment visa. To this day, there isn't, it hasn't been put into effect. Mm. Yeah. So let's say your marriage was still, you know, a, a thing. Then how long into that marriage could you qualify for permanent residence? So, um, so I was in the process of applying for a spousal permit, mm. but I didn't get married 
because no, I know what I'm just saying. So I'm like, no, because that's been the speculation as well. And I'm like, oh. guys, I, you know, I could. There was a moment where I, I can live in Zim and still come here to work mm. and go back to mm. Zim. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? Um, but I think the 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 issue is there isn't a designated entertainment visa. Mm. In other countries, they are. In uh, like, I literally. So I'm going to Germany. Um, I my next single is a European single. Okay. So um, I'm going to Germany. My visa for Germany for going there to work as a musician was yeah. approved within 24 hours. Wow. How long is it? So I'm going there now f- at least for three months. Right, but they you. have an artist visa. So yeah. like, if I need to stay longer, they have a provision within wow. that. But I guess, you know, like, I think with South Africa, the, it's the immigration department has quite a lot going on. So... And then I New Zealand, because you stayed in New Zealand for a while, no? Yeah, so when I was a teenager, my parents work in New Zealand. They're okay. dairy farmers there, so... So you grew up soft, hey, yeah? they're milking it, eh? <laughs> so, but the, this is, you know, that's the thing. Drop the, 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 okay, wow. So I think there's always a, con- a misconception that I grew up soft. Everyone says it. Yeah, you did. I think it's a dairy farm. You're a cheese girl. Yeah, in New Zealand. <laughs> right, a proper cheese girl. I think, you know, I was raised by my grandmother. So I I, I have that thing of Umdanaga Gogo, who's spoiled. Um, but I come from a middle class. My parents were teachers. They went, going to New Zealand to dairy farm, sounds very bougie yeah, but it's yeah. not it's like living in the farms I bought my first guitar from milking cows wow, wow. <laughs> actually I need to find you guys a picture <laughs> <laughs> no I mean God, so her life was too smooth though you know the parents are New Zealand yeah. she's got pretty privilege <laughs> She Chilling can see. She sang no, but you know what I mean. You. And so then God was like, "Here's no talk." <laughs> <laughs> no, guys. There's also a dark side of being pretty. Eh? There is. It's a bit of trouble. But there, yeah, is, it's a there, there is a dark. There is a dark side of pretty privilege. Even when you're really talented at what you do, it's taken yeah. a long time for people to acknowledge my talent. Oh. I think, mm. you know, but also it's like, it's not about acknowledging it. You know, I think I've constantly proven myself by continuously doing what I love and doing it well. But it sometimes people are like, ah, I win the manga win. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, uh, but, you know, I think now I'm such a believer in life. You work with what you have. Mm. What God gives you, you work with. I think for me, um, my real name is Kukuletu, which means precious. I'm big on what names mean. Mm. So I do understand that, like, you know, God was like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> You know those things with the guy. brown spots on the you don't even know those eggs. Yeah, it's coming in different shapes. Some are just super white. Some are just brown. Some are like all these dark spots. That's the one you had. I give up on you. And the name Berita, so, that, that's your mother's, right? Berita is my mother's name, yeah. Oh, yeah, what does that mean? It means truthful. Oh, okay. Yeah, I chose the name because I think at the time, I remember with my first label, they're like, Gugu, you're going to call yourself Gugu and sing. But which I think is fine. You can still be Gugu later too. Yeah. You know, or, you know, since now I like, I have a single coming in Germany and France, they'll call me Juju Le Toi. Hey! <laughs> so if this, you know, if this berita, if I see, because now when I type my name, there's all this nonsense oh, yeah, on Google. Yeah, yeah. So you never know. Maybe I should release a juju le toi. Oh, I like but that. that's more French than German. Germans are rough, man. That, <laughs> Google, the, but it sounds yeah, nice, man. It's dash, though. It's oh, dash. I like that. <laughs> and you said you're single. It's it's a European single. What does that mean? You're just dropping it in Europe or you're singing in, in, in So English? that's a good question because... Now, when you drop music, it obviously drops everywhere. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so I've just done a partnership with a German label and I've got management in Germany. Oh, and, shout out. Shout out. Um, amazing, amazing. The amazing. plan, you know, my goal was my goal was always South Africa, then Europe. Mm. So and for a long time, you know, I was told, oh, no, but your, your stuff is not African enough. Yeah. That's what I was told for a long time until Whoa. two years ago where I was told, Actually, you know, this when I this company started talking to me, they're like, "We've we've marketed soul music in Europe, and we think you can break in Europe." Mm. So, um, it's my first European single because it, I guess um, it's the single that my 
target, like, how can I put this? Because now, you know, any song can break anyway in the world. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. But I would say for me, what's important with this is we are going to put marketing promo in Germany and France mm. and, and in South Africa as well, which mm. is going to be the first time because all this time I've just been making work that only gets marketed in South Africa. And aren't you scared because like now uh, I'm a piano's on the rise, especially like overseas. So do you think there's still room for your type of music that you make that side? Uh, I'm not scared. I'm excited, yeah. actually. I <sighs> think, um, and shout out to all, you know, the youngsters. Hey, they're killing ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, they're coming <laughs> with fire. Penuka. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I think for me, what I've, I've seen is that in this season, I call this year for me the year of open spaces and open sounds. So okay. I've been experimenting. I've gone to studio to work with Amapiano producers. I've also been working with Afrobeats producers. Dope. I've also been working in the Afro Soul style, you know, mm, uh, mm. stuff as yeah. well. I've also just been in studio with just my guitar. Some of my songs start with just me, like Ngeli Kiss. Mm. It's just me and my guitar. And then everything else gets edited. So even with Peace on, of Mind, my first single, it's actually with Abidoza. Oh, oh, he's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And hey, I'm, did you know Abidoza fired that girl, that manager of his? Which after one? after the Amma Bieno rap. I don't know. <laughs> guys, oh, wow. Yeah, she got fired. Yeah. Uh, for misrepresenting, <laughs> for misrepresenting him. <laughs> or, or what's it called, Gonjem? <laughs> Um, oh, for disrepute, yeah? Yeah, I don't the know. I is, heard about it now, now, bro. You know, the thing yeah. is, the, you know, the thing is, we are brands now, right? I also faced the similar challenge where I was like, okay, if Nando's was married to someone who's dis who is putting their brand in oh, disrepute, disrepute. disrepute, would you keep yeah. that person no, around? No, 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 and no, unfortunately, no, no. that's one of the challenges I've also. But she had she to was face. representing herself. She came on the show just being herself. But she said some yeah. wild things that then take away the credibility, especially of the brands that she handles. Sadly, she did say initially that she's okay. here, there on her own accord, yeah. representing herself as an individual. But mm. people cannot make that separation. Have you ever had to fire some managers? Um, so I haven't, I've had seasons where it's time to move on from oh, one manager to the okay, next. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, with my first management as well, like, Hey, my first contract, like it was a recording contract. It had one line that said, you will be managed da, 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 and they'll take this much. And I remember after my first paycheck that I got, I was like, Conan no off. Yeah. management. So. Mm. And then I, you know, was managed by an Eastern Cape based management company. And then there came a time where like my vision is bigger than just one place. Uh. It was time to move. And then after that, I went and worked with a bigger management company. Um, and that was great, but it was costly. Working with sometimes bigger companies, there's bigger costs involved. Mm. Didn't work for my brand. Um, and then after that, I decided to go indie and actually learn the business from the ground up. Mm. Um, hired someone in-house. That also had its own challenges because now you are like the boss. You have to mm. say what happens and, mm. and that can get, you know, a bit, it's a bit difficult for artists, especially for artists like, I think, the older artists like us that yeah. started a long time ago yeah. where, you know, like when Tandolotu first came out, I didn't even have to post a picture. I didn't have to. Oh, do, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Or oh, dance challenge. Dance challenge, you know. Mm. But now also it's a great time. So in this season, for example, when it comes to South Africa, I've got a team. I'm kind of like managing with the team what we do. But also like when I go to Europe, I was there for the first time last year and I was like, there's a difference. Wow. European managers, like they, they treat you like the artist that you are. And wow. I'm looking forward to a time in South Africa where we can get South African managers, black managers, Abantu to that know how to manage an artist. Ah, we're far from that. They just want to drink the rider, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they think for. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, cool. Uh, how did she write Tando Lueetu? And what was the reaction when the song blew up? So, Tando Lueetu, <clears throat> I wrote with a friend of mine called Busisiwe, Alicia Smith. Um, she's from Pumlane in East London. And the song initially, to, when it first came out, when we first worked on it, I had first the hook of, you know, why you're pulling his yoyam. At the time, I had never even been heartbroken, to be mm. honest. Mm. Mm. It was more of her story. Um, we met, I used to do like soul clap sessions, 
sessions where I would go and perform. And at the time, being such a raise, and at 10 o'clock, the raise would close. So every time I would need to look for a place to sleep. So whenever I went to a gig, I would always look for a female and be like, yo, where, where are you staying? Can I, you know, crash there for the night? And this one time I met Ubusi Siwe. And that night we wrote Tandoloitu. Oh. Did you finish your course? Because hey, you were busy with this music. Oh thing. yes, darling, and oh, I graduated yeah. cum laude. Oh, oh hey, I'm so hey, 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 I also learned that I was toxic, eh? You were toxic? Yeah. You're a sweetheart, Perita. No, but... Not like, a chance. I'm telling you. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how this is going to be. Pass- passive aggressive. Passive aggressiveness. Nah. Passive aggressiveness can be toxic. Ah, those are the worst. <laughs> yeah, because nah. you... Like, it takes me a long time to reach Nkatele. Yes. But once in Nkatele, I think I've experienced this in, in the relationships that I've come out of, people don't le- believe when I leave them. Yes. They don't, yes, yes, they don't yes, believe yes, that yes, she left. Yes, yes. She left me. Because for the longest time, I'm like taking whatever you're doing and I'm like... I think it's like that with all women. A lot when of ladies. They, when they leave, they leave. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to hit you like a train. Yeah, but now I've, re- I've learned you need to express your needs. You need to say who you are, you know, and, you know, like, I think for me, the healing journey started from I, I went home I went to my grandmother, I went to my family, you know, because I was facing an extreme situation where someone is harassing my family, my parents. He's harassing your, your family? My Jeez. parents, my siblings, my friends. Wait, when you mean harassing them, what's he doing? Is he calling them, blowing up their phones? So, um, I think when I left, the, when I left, so initially when I, I left my marriage, right, I said to him, listen, I think I need space and I need you to think about the things that are happening because this is not what I signed up for, signed up for in, 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 in our marriage, marriage right? Mm. I was hoping that he was going to take time and reflect mm. and, you know, come back to me and say, this, this is, is how we can move forward. Got you. But what happened is that the moment I, I, I left, he kind of, I think he didn't take that well. So... You know, a lot of things happened where... But now you didn't leave, like, she left. She said she's going to get a pillowcase or something. No, but you know... <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that story. No, guys, no, no. When you've experienced living with someone who has anger, who you don't know what they're going to do... Yeah. When yeah. you when you, 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 you say you're going to leave. The last the night before I'd say that I was leaving, there was a teddy bear. He had taken that teddy bear and ripped it apart. Oh, whoa. So, like... When that has happened... Yeah, you and, can't be and, honest. And I'm not saying this because I'm saying things about him, but there are so many people that are in relationships that can turn physically abusive yes. or emotionally abusive. It doesn't just start like that. If someone breaks something in front... I d- if someone breaks something in front of you or shows a behavior or treats people around you in a way that undermines people, then you have to look closer into that person. So when that happened, the teddy bear stuff, who do you call? Like, who do you tell? Aren't you shocked? So th- that's when I was like, you know, I I, I can't stay. Mm. That's where when I'm telling my, my therapist, my therapist is like, someone's going to die in this house. Yeah. Rather leave, guys. Mm. Than, right now, he can say whatever he wants to say about me. I am alive. Mm. He is alive. Mm. We are both well and alive. Why did he rip the teddy bear? Like, what was happening? Was it an argument? So it, it was... Uh, so it was... Um, we had come to that point the day before I left where I was like, look, you continuously are getting angry, mm. the shouting, I can't take this. I can't live like this anymore. Mm. Mm. You know, I've had to physically restrain you from police. I, there are Whoa. so many things that have happened. Um, you know, we're driving, you have road rage, you get out of the car, you take a rock and you throw it. <gasps> with road. you in the car? With me in the car. Whoa. I can't leave. I can't go home to Zim. When I'm coming back from Zim, you're being carried out of, you by bouncers. 
you know, uh, that's not the ha- image of a husband he's, that I want. Yeah. Hey, it's been like, crazy it, two it, years, it's man. Like yeah, because you want to say, look, it's Perita's husband. And it's Perita's husband, but also, you're my husband. I'm supposed to love you and respect you. Oh. In fact, I'm supposed to respect you. You are supposed to love me. Mm. Now, I've lost all respect for you because of the things that you are doing. And now, any conversation, I'm generally someone who's who's who doesn't like to shout and mm. scream. I didn't grow up in that kind of a household. So for him, it seems like it's normal. Huh. For him, he's like, ah, this it's just a rough patch. We'll get through it. For me, it's like, no, you know. Sure, that's wild, man. How come so, he doesn't ever had kids? I wanted kids, actually. Mm, mm. I wanted kids. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, shit, that must hurt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, no, because you know what? I I always say to myself and I think to myself, maybe one day 10 years from now, I'll be able to sit down with my ex-husband mm. and he will have grown and he will have learned and he will have gone through the journey he needs to grow go through to learn, mm. right? And understand how to do things the right way. Right mm. now, he does not know how to do things the right way. Mm. Even with me, like even my family, it got to a point where my family was like because you you don't know you are disrespecting us as a family. So would you, you take know? him back though? No. At Unfortunately, all. no. Mm. When you're saying your family said you, his family is this is was it his family that was disrespectful towards your family or just no, him? No, no, his family are lovely people. Oh his beautiful. family are lovely people. It's him. He he is the one that unfortunately um even I don't want to leave my marriage. I, I can't tell. Unfortunately, the thing is, again, people are going to interpret what I say, how I say it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I did not want to leave my marriage. I left my marriage wow. because I was living with someone who was impossible to live with. Someone whose anger was escalating, was not willing to work on that. Someone who was not, who was putting, like, basically ab- abusing me by blackmailing and being emo- in an emotional, in a way that, you know, there's abuse where you can see it. Yeah. There's some that you're like, ah, but here you're being conniving and malicious. And now when I leave, it gets worse. Yeah, yeah it got worse. It, get, it, it get, got it becomes, worse, yeah. and that's where, that's where unfortunately a lot of women also reach out to me and say, I had to, I had to go into hiding at some oh. point. When I went home, there was a time where I had to literally go into hiding because I don't know what he's going to do. Some shows, it's like last year, it's like someone's like, I want to come to your show, but what if Mm. with all this turmoil that's happening, what if it happens at your show? Which is, it hasn't happened. But there's so many men that when women leave, they make women's lives hell. Hell. Mm. Mm. They stalk them. And unfortunately, there are countries where when you do that, when you do that, you get arrested Mm. because those are signs of behavior that, you know, those are signs of, of 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 dangerous behavior, and unfortunately, we live in a country where that hap- that can continue to happen, and it's not. What do you think about him going to prison? He's going to prison, eh? He's going to jail or something. Is he not? I saw something like that. Jeez, what's fake chugger when you need a? Yeah. I saw something like that. I didn't read it fully. To be honest, I d- I don't know because mm. I haven't spoken to him in a while. Um, but like I say, more than anything. I wish him peace and I hope he can work on himself. Was there ever something that you saw on social media that he said, which you were like, yeah, this is a bit too far. Like, yo, who's this guy? I don't recognize this person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it happened. For me, the first time I didn't recognize my husband was the day I had to hold him from, physically restrain him from police. That day I got home and the challenge was that when I say to him, did you see what happened? He said to me, did you see what those police were doing to me? And that became a challenge for me. And then at some point, he was trying to shift my narrative of what mm, I saw to say, mm. you see, you, you are absent-minded. You, you are this, you are that, you are that, you are that. And that's when I was like, I don't recognize the, this person. And the next day, even, and the painful thing about it as well is that the next day, he's the sweetest wow. guy ever. He was, baby, let's go for ice cream. Crazy. They will be, you know, it's, sweet. Yeah. it's like it's a different person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for me, I can't see that person anymore. Even by the time he's going online, saying things, most of them lies. Hmm. And at some point I confronted him and I was like, why are you lying? And he was like, I'm just being a little entertaining. I was like, I... Why didn't you ever take his phone? 
how do you take someone's phone away from them? Mm. And I think, I don't know, guys. Yo. What are some of the lies you'd call him out on? That ah, I'm in your now. You're just lying. <laughs> ah. There's so many. <laughs> hey, <laughs> man. The Where thing is, start? no, you know, the challenge with what you're asking me is now it's going to be a he said, she said. Yeah. yeah. Even no, after this true. interview, like, it's going to be a, no, but she's saying this or he's saying this. Mm. No. You know, for me, I think the intention is is to really move forward. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm saying I won't talk about this again after this. But also, it's important for you to talk your truth. The whole truth. You know what I mean? Because we don't know the side that you're talking about. You understand? Because we only uh, see one narrative. So I think in as much as you're saying that, it's also important for you to tell Mm -hmm. your story in your own words. You know what I mean? For example, like with the car, they said you'd crash the car, a V-class or whatever. And then they said, bring back a bag, you know? So much was said that like I... To get into it and start to correct out literally, you With know what me. I'm what you're asking me, I'm doing for my lawyers. Mm. And that on its own is very traumatic when you have to go and be like, he did on this and retell and happened. relive yeah. the trauma. This, this happened, this happened, this happened. So I that's crazy, yeah. man. Hey. Uh, she has worked yeah. with the likes of Black Coffee and Oskido. Who has been the best person to collaborate so far in your career? So I haven't collaborated with Black Coffee actually as Is of it? yet. No, oh, okay. no, it hasn't happened. Yeah. Um, but I have worked with Oskido. Yeah. And Oskido actually remixed Tandoloitu when it first came out. Yeah. And he contributed to Tandoloitu becoming big, big. bigger. Okay. Um, and for that, I'll forever be grateful. Mm. I actually... Yeah, I did a lot of shows with him. I've worked... I think what I'm excited about is the people I've currently been working with. Oh, yes. Yeah, like even just working with Abidoza on Peace of Mind, we've done it, and Ali Keys, we've, we've, we've probably done like three, four songs. Wow. So yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's been really good. Um, I went into studio with Daki. Also that... Oh, Dark. What is, is that dark? Yeah, dark. <laughs> dark. dark. Hey, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That, um, <laughs> dark. That's the thing. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Afrotech. Yeah. Afrotech, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, because like I just wanted to expose myself to different sounds. I went into studio with him. That also, yeah. we came out with a beautiful song. I also spent a lot of time in studio with Amos. Amos! Amos yeah. Chili! Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. that's been fun. We we've also we've done a lot of songs together. Mm-hmm. Um I've also been in studio with the musical chef and them Tuda. Hey. Hey. You're dropping it bombs. Big, big bombs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, dog. That's that's also been really, really fun. Is this for your album or like just releasing Jeff? On their project. Oh, their projects. So, I think it's their songs. You know, at this point, we, I'm sitting on about 30 songs. That's so a, some songs are for them some songs are for me mm. i'm just continuously in the studio i'm i'm right now it's the goal is to be in the studio um i've also worked with some some german producers mm. for the stuff that i'm doing in europe wow. um yeah i've also worked with some you know up and coming dj maggie who's up and coming more so up and coming soul artist mala up and coming from the eastern cape yeah, I'm gay. I've been coming as well from the Eastern Cape. So it's been a it's been a bit of both. When you see, I don't know if you watched the interview we did with Msaki. Yeah. Where she's saying she's taking a break from music because yeah. yeah. of um, social media and all that stuff. How, how do you feel? Because you strike me like you guys are in the same WhatsApp group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we are friends. Mm. So, um, first of all, I think, you know, she's done a lot in the past two years like she has really given off herself so I think her taking a break even now I think she's off social media I completely support that I think sometimes social media just messes with your mental state Mm. I think as artists we're already going through a lot just trying just to be an artist do you know showing up as yourself is very difficult Mm. just to be an artist and also you must understand once you make the artist is for the people you may like it you may not like it yes yes. you know what I mean Mm. and then you have situations where drama that you never intentionally wanted to Mm. get out get out so I'm really I think right now I honestly feel like the past three years I slept. I feel like I was busy doing this marriage thing that didn't work. (laughs) Right now, I want to get back to my first love, which is music. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I I just want to, every day, I just want to push myself. Mm. 
Yeah. What's your relationship with social media? Do you read the comments? Are you just one of those post work or post whatever content and leave? So I've gone through different phases. Okay. There was a time where I was off social media completely. And then there was a time where I post and leave. Now, because I'm promoting my music, I'm there. Oh. I do therapy every Friday. Oh, <laughs> you do therapy every yeah, Friday. You need it if you're going to be yeah, in I those comments. I do therapy every Friday. I play tennis. I, I do a lot of things to feed into myself so that when I come into spaces, when someone is saying something that's not true about me, I'm also like a child of God and I pray. So if some I see something that's untrue, I'm able to pick up that this is untrue. If it starts to affect me, then I've got a team. Then I can be like, okay, let me hand over. But I think I'm just in a season where I, I want to be in touch with my fans, you know. So I try and, and, and post myself as much as I can. Hey, but some of those comments can sting, my man. Brutal. Hey, uh, God loving or not, God fearing or not. Fear <laughs> yeah, or not. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> someone say something about someone has the ability to ruin your entire day. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah, yeah. but I'm at a point yeah. where you, you you need to do a lot. Like a lot has been uh, done to me right at this point where you would need to really do a lot to ruin my day. Tell me about therapy, man. Like, when, yeah. when did that start? So I started therapy when I was leaving my marriage. Oh, so it's a recent thing. It's a year and three months now. Every Friday? Every Friday. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And I've learned a lot about myself as well. Yeah. I, it, for me, I think, if anything, um, I want to thank me. <laughs> Shout out to me. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to me because I just decided, you know what, at the end of the day, I can look at someone else, I can look at my ex husband, all I want, he's done this and this and this. But at the end of the day, what did I contribute to mm. it? I allowed it to happen. Yeah. I allowed myself to stay in that situation for so long. Why did I allow that to happen? Mm. And I Therapy, you look into those things. You look into, you know, whatever is causing you uncomfortability. You come out of your shell. Mm. So, yeah. All right, cool. So, the song you're performing for us, what is it called? Peace of Mind. Peace of Mind. Okay. Nice. okay. Peace of Mind is the song. Yeah. But I'll just, I want to do like a little medley. Ah, you nice. Know, just remind you guys of who I really am. Fuck. So, this Peace of Mind you're going to perform in one of the other songs. It's the Abidoza one. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. You got a question? You want to ask her? Um, you had said earlier on that uh, you were in the relationship. You felt like you hadn't fully come into yourself, and that mm. was another problem. Are you? Are you? How far uh, are you with that? Are you? Do you feel like you're fully now come into yourself? Or she you should be. Time? She she's in therapy every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, she fight the therapy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. I think the thing as well is that I noticed for myself is the need for validation. Mm. I think that you know. I, at some point, put that need for validation to one person and I gave that person so much, much power. Mm. I gave them too much power. Mm. Um, and now, I, you know, I'm able to, to do that for myself. And I think that's where the conversation of self-care and self-love comes in. Um, and also just their childhood wounds that I didn't know I had, mm. you know. So... I'm working on those. Beautiful. Man, it's you nice. said you wanted kids. You still you still do? Of course. Nah. Mm. I still think I'm gonna get married again, guys. We wanna get married again. Oh, yeah. Nah? I wanna Beautiful. this time around, hopefully I can do it better. Mm. Yeah. Man, it's nice being a woman. Are you hearing that? Yeah, I'm working on myself, self-care. What a what a what a that's a man, there's no time, my man. You gotta make money, my man. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make money. And shoot yourself one day, right? With all that money. No, yeah. nah, man. Time, no man. guys. And you know the thing also about men is that you guys need to take care of yourselves. Yeah. You guys But there's no time, baby. Yeah, well, under all this. I don't pressure. have time to be seeing a therapist every Friday, bro. But you see, you've got a life coach. Yeah, yeah, when I'm going through the most. <laughs> not, every, not every Friday. I mean, I was telling you now, yeah. like, uh, I took a drip on Friday because yeah. I had such a hectic yeah. weekend. Yeah. It's yeah. Monday now. I feel like it's worn so, out. Already. But also, I think therapy is different things for different people. You've got to find solutions. You've got to find what makes you've got to find who's the person that you can go to, who's your mentor, who's, you know, who do you look up to? Mm. Who, like, you've got to find a voice of reason. I go to therapy to find solutions. To be like, hey, I'm feeling this way. What's going on? And then they're like, oh, boom, boom. Then I'm back on my saddle. Yeah. 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 And you? I went to therapy. She said I'm fine. <laughs> and it was your therapist, by the way. 
No, had that's the session. problem. Had one session, she said, oh, you're fine, man. I'm like, for real? Yes, I like, yeah, man. You're yeah, strong. I'm like, yeah. Boy, since then, I haven't looked back. I'm, I'm on my saddle. Hey, man. Uh, you were talking about acupuncture. You said I must stop doing the drip. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very big on health and wellness. Yes. Um, and I think on a daily basis, meditation, guys. You know, if you can't take a holiday, meditate. Meditation works. Meditation works. But if you're Do you know, now I, I literally make everyone around me meditate. I make my band meditate. I make my... Why didn't I make you guys meditate? Yeah. <laughs> Let's meditate. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, like meditation, you just take a moment and you allow all the thoughts that are coming up to your mind to come out. You just allow yourself to f- to feel everything. And after that, you just feel so much better. So I meditate, I do yoga, which sometimes I make my band do yoga. Wow. <laughs> you know, all those things. Actually, I really should have made you guys do these things. You know? It's um, no time. Hey, yoga. Time. <laughs> but there's things you can do. So instead of yeah. getting a drip, yeah. acupuncture. And I don't, I do ac- acupressure. Okay. So acupressure is where you get your pressure points you know, go, you, you know, you sit on the road a lot, you sit yes. in this chair a lot, go to a chiropractor once in your while. You'll be amazed just aligning your spine, okay. what that will do for, your, for you energetically. Yeah. So things like that, you know, um, yeah. Because for me, it's more fatigue. Fatigue. Acupressure, I'll hook you up. Oh, you you just chill, man. <laughs> acupuncture, acu this, chiropractor. He wants to drink and not gym and rock the whole weekend. Just gym. Remember how much I used to sweat when I played? I no longer sweat at all. Yeah. You know, gym. Yeah. And let's cut, drink water. You'll be fine, man. You don't need to, all these drips. I tried that. I'm like, ah, it's just gym, the, man. the drip thing, I think, is a scam. You think so? Slightly. Let's. We need to be honest about drips, man. For real. Yeah. Remember, Jube, Jube gave us his. We didn't feel anything. We're like, yeah, look, <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah. Ah, come on. No, and also you don't Scam. know what you're injecting into your body. You know, your. So the whole point of things like acupressure is that your body is a self-healing. Mm. You know, organism. So if you give it that circulation of the body, circulation of the blood, yeah. then you're allowing your body to do its work. Mm. Yeah. So sure. anyway, thank you so much, Burrito Man. Thank you so much for coming you through. Guys. Do oh, people Barita. ask you about Nota when they see you? Eh, the other day, Uber driver asked me. I was like, I got a booty and trail away. Yo. That I got to win. Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think I get more com- more of music questions. Oh, you know? nice. So, Beautiful. You know, that's just, your brand. That's your brand. Yeah, that's what you do. That's mm. what I do. So I appreciate, I appreciate, guys. It's 11 years in the music business. Mm. Yo. Um, and I'm still going. And I'm, I'm still going to be here. I'm not going anywhere. That's crazy. That's 11 years, you still don't have a visa. You got to renew every 90 days. Bro, I'm, going, I'm going to Europe time. now, guys. Hey, so I'm going man. to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Barita. please give it up for Perita. She's about to perform for us. Do take it away. <laughs> oh, Perita. Awesome, fantastic. Dandi nomfana O muhle Ikamala ke Tando lwe tu Bendi mtanda Endi tanda Sasi ngoshula Ah Nazin do do more. Why you pulling shit, Oya? Ding, I'm clinging. Why you pulling shit, Oya? Ding, I'm lending. Tandolea 
Nanina Tando Lue to Dawa Zanina Tando Lue to And this one is for the chillers. <laughs> Especially for you, chillers. Baby, in Kweli Kiss, his aunt who's a Kweli Kiss, his aunt no no, his aunt no no, who turned the moon to a cold, his aunt no no. Baby, near Boza, I can shoot this on Fela Throngwini. Is a must hand on it, spoke on it, come on to me. Baby, in Kweli Kiss, is a Ndipose. Kweli Kiss, is a no no. It does a me, baby, when Kelly kiss is on the pose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let the moon to a call. Even your boots are I am trying to judge Shoot yourself a little when Is a must in there Spook in there Yes, son Dear to death Dear look Is a pose, the kiss is a no, 
So this next song is my new single, it's called Peace of Mind. I hope it gives you peace of mind just listening to it. <laughs>
Welcome to Black Excellence. Do not fear, for if you do, just sip on some grandeur. And if you still do, ask ourselves, what would Mapapunzi do? Parama chilla, itlesha lefiki. Bungo even when they ask you, how sabi do not fear. For if you do, just say, and